the Icons of Real Estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from eXp's top producing icon agents? If you are an ambitious eXp agent ready to skyrocket your business, this podcast is for you. Tune in every week with your host, Tomasz Fonseca, and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your eXp business from $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Hello, guys, and welcome to another episode of the EXP Realty mini series podcast brought to you by the Real Estate Master Summit. With us today, we have Jonathan Leahy, he's a top producing agent, an icon agent as well, and the team lead of the Fine Living Group, powered by EXP Realty. He was born in Jakarta, Indonesia, and John is living the American dream. More than a simple realtor, John is also working to change lives. The approach that made him famous, the famous one-liner, your home sold guaranteed or I'll buy it, is certainly a unique one. One that made him reach the milestone of 600 million in homes sold. John has also managed to get testimonials from some of the most famous people in the country and was featured on the relevant channels such as ABC, CBS, uh, NBC, Fox, and another uh, three-letter acronyms. <laughs> today, we'll get into the story of uh, what made John the real estate agent that he is today, and also how his vision is helping building one of the top teams in EXP Realty. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, and uh, let's let's just start with your real estate journey and uh, spare no details. We want to hear the full version. Absolutely, I got into real estate back in um, 2004 05. Um, I had no plans on being a realtor. Uh, like most realtors, we, we, ne we never planned to be a real estate agent, and, and that was my story. Um, I got into real estate to, uh, to be an investor. I was a flipper. So I was buying houses, I was um, flipping, and, and, and I decided to get my real estate license to, uh, to make sure I saved my own commission. Mm -hmm. you know, and of course, that was 04, 05, the market was hot. And, and I got stuck in real estate. I just kept on, you know, I, I bought houses, I flipped houses, I kept houses. And, and then when the market tanked, people had asked, you know, for my help. Hey, can you help me buy houses? Can you help me invest? And so I, I stayed in the business, even though there was no business. The real estate market 2008 had tanked so bad that I went from, you know, selling four or five homes a year as an investor to selling no homes that whole 2008. Um, and then... Basically, 2008, 2009, I barely survived in real estate. And in 2010, I decided to go full time, all hands on deck. Let's see where this goes. I, you know, I quit my day job and, um, and it's been the best journey ever. It was, it's been a lot, of, a lot of challenges, but I love those challenges because those challenges make you grow. And, and that's how I see uh, real estate. It's like a lot of these challenges makes you grow as a person, makes you grow as a, as a leader, and it's you have your dreams. If you have your dreams in place and you know what you're dreaming for, you know your vision, that's the best part. Exactly. And, uh, and that's what people say. Real estate is available for everyone, but it's, it's not for everyone. And uh, the fact that you, you held on tight and uh, then you decided to invest in yourself uh, in 2010, I guess that was the breaking point into maybe who you are uh, even today. <laughs> right. People, everybody thought I was crazy when I said, hey, I'm going to quit my day job <laughs> where I had great salary. And instead, I'm going to go um, full time into real estate with no guarantees of any sorts of any kind. People thought I was crazy, but um, I'm very grateful I made that decision. Uh, I found a mentor back in 2010 or 2011 uh, that showed me how to be successful in real estate. Craig Proctor uh, was my mentor at the time and showed me exactly how to build a business in real estate. So I'm grateful for that. Nice. So before you're crazy, now you're crazy successful. See, <laughs> <laughs> I believe like you have to be have a little level of craziness to be successful, <laughs> to be that that a successful person in um in a crazy world. So yeah. you know a little bit of a little bit of crazy is needed to uh, to dare to dream big. Like I believe that for sure, for sure. <laughs> so uh, and now that uh, so we understand how does uh, EXP Realty get on. Uh, your story, um, you were with uh, Ramax before, right? And you, actually your intention was to continue there uh, mm -hmm. for the rest of your, of your career. So what made you uh, make the, the change? 
So the funny thing is, this is 2021 now. And um, so I bought my Remax five years ago. So it was like 2015, 2016. The moment I opened my Remax, I heard of EXP. So I heard of <laughs> EXP day one. And my friends had moved over to EXP and, and they started to try to you know, recruit me. And they, they told me the information and the story about EXP. And I said, that's a great idea. And I'm like, maybe I can keep my Remax here locally and start building teams around the country uh, with EXP. And they said, no, you can't do that. You have to give up your Remax. Like you can't be on both, uh, you know, both companies. And I, so obviously at the time I was like, no, I can't do that. And I kind of wish now looking back, I wish I had the, the courage to actually make the switch immediately, but that's what it is, what it is, right? Uh, no regrets now, but it was, um, it was this time last year, it was October, November of 2020. And I had grown a team and a brokerage um, at that time of maybe 20 plus agents. And in a matter of five minutes, um, I had lost like almost half of those agents, just like that, um, where two of the teams in my brokerage decided to leave in this, on the same day within five minutes of each other. And at that time, you know, and then I was like, well, that, that took a long time to build. Like, it wasn't like, you know, just accidental re uh, recruiting. It was a very intentional recruiting of these teams and helping them and coaching them and, and, and building them out. And, and in five minutes, all my hard work went down the drain. But I look at it, I was like, maybe life's happening for me. Maybe, maybe life is telling me to look at other opportunities where this wouldn't have happened. You know, so I started talking to people. And at the same time, I had a team out in San Diego. Neither one of us were EXP. And, and she started reaching out to me about, hey, let's, maybe we can partner up. Maybe you can open up Fine Living here in California and we can partner up. And, and she said, have you heard of EXP? Now, mind you, she's not an EXP agent, but she said, have you heard of EXP? And so I said, all right, let me think about this. Let me look into the EXP model. Maybe this would make sense. And, and for the first time in that five-year period, I was actually open to other options because before I wasn't really op open to leaving Remax. It became an option because at EXP, the retention of agents is much easier. And so, and then also, obviously there's a lot of different reasons, but it's, it became an option. Number one, I thought, hey, if, if there's a company that would help me retain retain agents, that's number one option for me. Well, that's an option for me. And number two, I have a team potentially that I want to partner with in other states. So if I, if I can do that easily at another company, then I would consider that company. And guess what? The answer was EXP. EXP answered both of those things. And so I started looking into the actual model. And, and the funny thing is, again, I was not, I, at the time I had a team of 20 agents. So moving a team of 20 and getting a unanimous decision is hard. Can you imagine moving 20 people all at the same time on the same date? Um, so my concern is, you know, what do I do with my 20 agents? You know, what if I want to move and none of them want to move? Would I just build and start all over again, which is always an option. And so what I did was I called every one of my partners one by one from my directors, my broker, uh, my top leaders on the team. And I said, hey, take a look at this model for me. I, I think I'm a little crazy. This probably won't work, but check it out. And one by one of my agents, my directors, my broker, they said, this would be a great idea. One of my agents said, I can finally retire. And I'm like, are you serious? Well, I'm, I'm like 40 at the time. So retirement is nowhere close to anything I'm thinking of. But my guy said, I can finally retire. This makes sense. And I'm like, oh. I guess it does. So one by one of my agents and my partners, they start convincing me that this was actually a better plan than what we had played in place at the old company. And I also thought, you know what? Because I saw my staff, you know, my, my, my directors without uh, health insurance. And I wish, I'm like, I wish I can give you health insurance. I wish I can help pay for that. And at EXP, that was an option. So looking at as a, you know, from the team leader perspective, I can provide more value to my team, to my partners. I was like, wait, this might be the, the way to go. 
So and, that, you, and you brought the, the whole 20 with you. All 20, 100%. Everybody switched. <laughs> and yes. the funny, we, we switched over April Fool's Day. So everybody thought, everybody thought it was a joke. <laughs> April Fool's Day, I made the announcement. I was in Disney World. I was at, um, I was at, I forgot which park, but I was in Disney World in Orlando when I made a, 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 a series of stories on Instagram, one by one after another. And people thought, John, what joke are you pulling? This is the biggest prank you've ever pulled. It's April Fool's Day. <laughs> this must be a joke. And I said, no, this is, this is serious. We actually just shut down. We just closed our old company down. And as of today, we're at EXP. Nice. And, and now, uh, how many agents do you, do you have on your team? Uh, local here, team? We, have, we have 34 agents locally. And then we have a total of 43 agents that are partnered with us around the country. Uh, we, opened Remax, uh, we opened Fine Living San Diego uh, a month ago. We also opened up uh, Fine Living Group of Florida a month and a half ago. Um, and then we have a team here that's aligned with us in Vienna, Virginia. Um, and then we have another team in, in San Jose, California. So just the EXP model allowed us to expand and, and to build teams all around the country without having to worry about, you know, the borders and, and um, the, the licensing. Yeah, I would say in the, and right now recruiting is, is evolving. And with EXP, you have way more options and way more perks to present to your um, to your prospects, but what is your approach uh, right now into recruiting agents for your team? Are you on the lookout? Are you batting a lot on agent attraction, focusing more on agent production? Uh, let us know. Everything, everything. So it's, it's always, I'm a big believer of what Zig Ziglar said. If I can help you get what you want, if, if, help enough people get what they want and you get what you want. So it's never a recruiting thing for me. It's never like, hey, come over here. L let me, you know, mm -hmm. it's never. That is more like, hey, how's your business? How is your business looking like? What can I do to help? Um, because I'm a real estate coach. So if I can show you how you can increase your business, you know, let's, let's align. But if I can provide value for you, then let's not align. Let's not work together if, I, if there's no value I can provide for you. So the, the initial conversation is always, Let's look at your, you know, how's your business doing this year? How's your business this quarter? And how can I help you get to that next level? What, what does a 10 out of 10 business look like for you? And what's missing? And, uh, and so in your team, what do you, because I saw on your website, you say you claim there will be no need for open houses, no prospecting, no cold calling, because you, you can manage to supply them all the buyer leads and the seller leads and the appointments they need. My Correct. question is, how? <laughs> marketing. We managed to do that. <laughs> uh, we do direct response marketing. So we actually market, and it's not buying leads. People think, oh, John, you're just buying leads. No, we don't buy leads. People, when they get to us, they know who we are, which is marketing. Buying leads means they get to me and they don't know who I am, right? So we're running ads on the radio. We're, we're running marketing ads on the radio. We're running marketing ads on TV. We're marketing ads on YouTube. If you go to the movie theater here, we're running ads in the movie theater. Um, and then we're also running ads on Google, on Instagram, on Facebook. So we're spending money on, um, on marketing and running lead generation for all of our agents. But we don't stop there. Most companies and teams, they stop at let's generate the leads and let's throw you the leads and you run and chase the leads down. Um, unfortunately, when you chase prospects, prospects run away. Just like you know, if you and I go to, to, the, uh, to the car dealership today, and, you know, with the intention of actually driving the car and test driving it, the moment the salesperson comes up to us and they say, hey, how can I help you? Immediately, our response is, I'm just looking. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. I'll, yeah, I'll exactly. come back to you when I'm ready. All of the, these real estate prospects have the same exact mindset. If you chase them, they run away. So instead of chasing cold prospects, we generate leads that are actually warm. We get them to actually, we compel them to call us instead of us calling them and and you know, cold calling and door knocking. And, and the funny thing is I actually had a consultation yesterday with a realtor, one of the top realtors here. And I'm like, hey, how do you get your business? And she's like, I'm door knocking. And I'm, 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 and I'm like, how does that work for you? Like how many doors do you have to knock to get one conversation? She's like 150. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, how is your life? Like, how is that quality of life? And she said, it's not. I'm like, all right, so what if I can show you a way to tweak your messaging to get people to come to you instead of you chasing them, wouldn't your life be better? And she's like, yeah. 
I'm like, all right, perfect. Show me everything you're you know, doing right now. Show me your postcard. Show me you know, what is your actual message and what if we can tweak that message and instead of you just randomly knocking on doors and trying to get people, what if we can put a message out there and people call you? And so that's what I call marketing, right? It's not lead. It's not just buying leads. We actually compel people. We give them reasons to call us for information. And so every single month, we get anywhere between 400 to 600 buyers and sellers compelled enough to reach out to us. And so when they reach out to us, they're no longer cold because they actually know who we are. They know what they're reaching out for. They know what information they want. And so con converting those uh, buyers and seller prospects into, cl into clients is much easier than door knocking, than going out cold and people don't know who you are and trying to convert from ground zero. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's our whole business model is we generate the business for our agents and they're better quality leads than buying leads. Yeah, and door knocking, I think we, we just passed Halloween, right? I don't know right. if, she, if, she, if she made the, the assumption that, oh, I have to stop asking for a trick or treating. <laughs> <laughs> asking for just, just a treat. But, right, but yeah, exactly. But yeah, for sure, for sure, John. And uh, do you use any, any other marketing efforts besides, so what you're describing, you're describing uh, search engine marketing and uh, mm -hmm. social media ads. Do you use any other marketing efforts besides those? So I, we go hand in hand with third party testimonials, mm -hmm. right? Because when, when you put a message out there to compel people to call you, what people are doing nowadays are they're going to Google you. They're going to check your Zillow out. They're going to check you out to make sure you're legit, to make sure you're as good as they heard, right? So having third party endorsements from celebrities, that's huge. But the best part is third party endorsements, social, social proof from your past clients, Mm -hmm. So if you look into our, um, into our Zillow, we have over 400 testimonials and reviews. You look at our Google, we have over 600, we're probably close to 700 reviews now. And so that's a big part of our marketing is that we're going to compel the buyers and sellers to call. But before we also know before they call, they're going to check us out. They're going to be like, hey, let me just double check that they're good, right? So compelling them is number one. Step number two is now pre-selling them that we're as good as we are by using our old past clients and, you know, the celebrity endorsements and suggestions that we have to make sure that we're um, to help convert these uh, buyers and sellers. Okay, John, but I guess that's what I can't seem to understand just yet, because that's easy to say. Uh, of course, the, uh, the buyers and sellers testimonials, it's easy to say, easy, easy, easy to follow, but of course, not everyone will be able to get uh, celebrities' testimonials, right? Correct. So my question for you is, how did you manage to get, I think it was, I saw it was Barbara Corcoran, Ryan Seacrest, Hugh Hewitt. How did you get all those to, to say you're a top realtor, the one to trust? You know what? I'm very, I'm very blessed because I had the opportunity to meet with them and actually work with them. And, but it was one by one. It was It was me. I, I think it was like back in 2017, I thought to myself, you know, I would love to work with Barbara Corcoran, yeah. but it seemed like a mile, like a hundred million miles away from reality. And, um, and in 2019, I was, I remember I was traveling in Amsterdam when out of the blue and I was in a conference with my mentor at the time, Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. and I was traveling with him in, in, in Amsterdam at Business Mastery. And then my phone rang and it was um, one of the agents that worked with Barbara. And she was looking for an agent here in DC, the person that she knew had retired. And I'm like, oh, I would love to interview for that job. And, and so it started there. It was just, you know, what they do is they, they check out your actual testimonials from your clients. So <clears throat> I, I, we've been building up our testimonial reviews from clients and past clients for many years. I've been telling my agents and my partners, you know, your success, our success isn't measured based on how many homes we sell only, because that's just one side of the story. You can, you can sell homes and do it incorrectly and you never get referrals and you will never get reviews. And I told my agents and I'm like, what if, what if we do it correctly and we don't measure it just, just based on how many homes you sell, but we measure your, your success based on how many reviews you get and based on how many referrals you get and based on how many repeat clients you get. What if those were your measure of success based not just how many homes you sell? Would you approach your business differently? So we start switching our whole perspective and paradigm of how to measure success. 
And one by one, if you look at my, my Zillow, you can see how many of my agents have how many testimonials or reviews. You can actually see the ranking on my team because my successful, the most successful agents have the most reviews, not because they have the most sales, because they actually make it intentional that every person they meet with, they're going to wow them enough that that buyer and seller will want to actually give them a review without having to ask. So it's a mindset thing where we shifted the mindset of each one of our partners and agents and they approach every one of our clients as I'm going to give them such an amazing, amazing service that the review is going to become natural. Nice. And that, that's great insight. But of course, the review can come natural, but it's it's not for everyone that, you know, it's easier to leave a bad review than a good one. So Correct. do you do you make any any follow up on that uh, on the buyers, maybe uh an extra call saying, can you give us a review? What is your strategy to get more reviews? So I actually like what you said there. Um, if you go to a restaurant, right, and you had a bad experience, a bad experience, you are more likely to give a bad review. Yeah. If you get a good experience, you're like, well, that was expected. You have to go above and beyond a good experience. It has to be like an amazing, amazing experience for you to actually feel compelled to actually leave a review for at a restaurant. And so once we understand that as a real estate agent, as a, as, a, as a business owner, how do we wow our clients to the point where they're like, well, that was way above and beyond what I had expected. Because if you meet their expectation, they're not gonna give you a review. Like you might be beg, you might have to beg for it and they'll probably give you one. But when I say they're naturally gonna be compelled to just give you a review is when, they, when, you, when we go above and beyond what they had expected. And that expectation level is, well, you just have to communicate. You have to find out what exactly are they expecting. And then if you find out, okay, they're expecting A, B, C, and D to happen in the sale of their home, then as a team, we have to make sure A, B, C, and D and a whole bunch of other things actually happen as we promised and then communicate with them. Because the number one complaint in real estate, why most clients, not my clients, but overall around the country, the number one complaint is that my agent don't communicate. So we make it into a very, very focused thing where let's communicate to our clients. Let's make sure they feel communicated to and that, that they're not in the dark throughout the whole process of buying and selling. And so once we start doing that, getting, their, getting those reviews are really important. Now, we do get better reviews too. I mean, out of like a thousand reviews, we probably have like two or three. And when the two or three better reviews came in, I freaked out because it was early on where we had like, 20 good reviews and I had one bad review. And, and so it's 10%, right? 10% of the reviews were bad for that one moment. And I called my agents and I said, guys, uh, call all of your past clients. Like this is the time for you to bury a bad review. Like <laughs> if there's a time to get a review, it's right now because one out of 20 was bad at that time. Literally, we had 20 reviews. We had one bad review. Um, call off your past clients. So that was my first strategy. I said, let's just, let's tag team this together. At the time we had five agents and I'm out of those five agents, we buried that review. We went from 20 to like 35, 36 reviews. Um, so that, that's always how we do it. I actually don't mind bad reviews. And here's why. A bad review makes you look like a human, right? Imagine a company with a thousand reviews and they're all five stars. Like they look like fake like, reviews. This is, this is not real, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know what? No, I have some bad reviews. Yes, there are some people out there who didn't like me. That's cool. Because that made me look like human. I want to be human for, for my clients because my clients, they don't want to work with a persona. They want to work with a real person. They want to work with a real human being who's not perfect. If you're looking, you're seeking perfection, you're not going to find perfection anywhere. And we're not going to hide it. Like there is actual imperfections in everything that we do. We will try our best to, over, to, um, to overcome that and to, uh, to go exceedingly, uh, exceedingly above and beyond what their expectations are that becomes our goal because we know we're not perfect. Nice. That's awesome. And very, very inspiring. I must say very inspiring as well. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I wanted, I wanted to get uh, to talk about um, the one liner. You say your home sold guaranteed or I'll buy it. How did you come up with this approach and did it actually happen already that you bought the house yourself? I've rarely ever had to buy a home, um, but it's great because it actually solved the problem. Like 70% of home buyers around the country, at this exact moment, before they can buy an, a home, they have to sell their current home. 70% of people are moving up to their next home. So our guaranteed sale program actually solves that problem. We actually answer the dilemma that most buyers have. Do I buy first? Do I sell first? 
So now they don't have to worry because I will guarantee their home. They, I will be willing to buy their home. They want to move up to the next home. I'll take care of their current home. It solved their dilemma immediately. So we get more people calling in because of our offer. Our, our unique selling proposition is we'll, we'll buy it. If I can't find you a buyer at market value, it's on me. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. <laughs> But of course, you, you, your team does such a great job that you, you, you don't have to resort to that uh, final, uh, final, final uh, buying, buying stage, right? Not many times. Yes, we have a system in place to make sure that we're all protected. Um, but our, our ultimate goal is not to buy the home. So I'm not, I'm not in the home buying business. Mm -hmm. I'm in the home selling business and changing people's lives business. And so by the end of the day, if I have to buy the home, I'm willing to do it. We have the funds, we have the ability to actually get the mortgage in place to actually buy these houses. But if I just buy houses, then we go broke. So the ultimate outcome is always, what can we do? How can we put the systems in place to generate more buyers, to generate more demand for these, uh, these clients' homes so that they ultimate, ultimately sell and not only sell to get top dollar for our clients so that they're happy, so that it exceeds their expectation and we get a review. Nice. Sim, you, you have a very, very nice system put in place and a very good customer service, it seems. And, uh, and, tell, and tell us, John, where, where do you go from here? What are your goals? We are, so the funny thing is, back in 2017 or 2019 or so, sometime around those times, at that time, I was local here in the DC metro area. And my, I, have, I have one team. And I, I was attending a conference At, um, at a Tony Robbins conference, you, you, uh, Unleash the Power Within, UPW. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the speaker on stage said, hey, close your eyes and see where you are five years from today, 10 years from today, 15 years from today. And I heard a voice in my head say, you know, why are you dreaming so small? Why do you only dream to be a big team in a local space? Why don't you dream bigger? Why don't you dare dream bigger dreams that nobody else are willing to dream? And I was like, huh, maybe that's the next step. Right. And, and so I start writing down these marketplaces that I want to open a team in. And the funny thing is San Diego is one of them. South Florida was one of them. And I start naming places that we want to expand to. Now at my old company, that was not reality. I couldn't expand with my old model where every, if I, if I wanted to expand to all these marketplaces in my old company, I would have to buy franchises and it's just too costly at EXP, we didn't have to buy a franchise. I can literally just open recruit agents, plant my system, my systems out in these marketplaces and coach the agents to run my system. And now we're open in San Diego, we're open in Florida. We have other places that we want to open in. Um, my goal is to have 100 agents with me by my one year anniversary, which is April Fool's Day, 2022. So that's my goal. I'm putting it on air. Now I have no choice but to accomplish it, right? You have 2022, to. You April have to. 1st, the goal is 100 agents in our fine living network. Nice. And uh, I believe, uh, I believe, and I think our audience believes as well after, after listening to your, to your insights that you'll reach that goal, maybe even, even sooner than that. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's Love get it. it. <laughs> so, uh, John, the last the last question here is is a question that we ask to every guest. A bit of a philosophical question: Is in what areas do you feel you need to improve, and uh, what are you doing about it? So, we're always looking to improve. Um, I'm a big big believer in uh, what they call "can I," you know, constant and never ending improvement. So, every single week, we go through our staff meeting and we start with the wins. Like, you know, what are the wins this week? What are the opportunities? And there's always something that we're working on. Right now, we're working on, you know, how do we keep our agents more accountable? Um, because accountability, you know, we, we've been focusing on training a lot lately. And today, I'm like, you know what? Stop the training. We've given our agents a lot of training. Now, let's how do we keep our agents accountable to their goals, to what they actually want to keep themselves accountable to? So right now, we're working on accountability to make sure that if our agents say, hey, uh, my goal is to sell 50 homes next year. All right. If you want to sell 50 homes, there are, these are the four or five things that you have to be kept accountable to. Are you okay if I keep you accountable to that? So refocusing our approach and, and then instead of just doing more marketing and generating more business, 
how do we keep our people that are with us, our partners, how do we keep them accountable? And how to keep myself accountable at my goals and, and things like that. So that's what we're working on right now. Nice. Nice, John. So, of course, most important thing is how can our audience uh, reach you? Uh, if you need anything, if you want to talk about real estate, you want to talk about your business, you want to talk about your uh, your career in real estate, you can always reach out to me. Um, my email is john, that's J-O-N, at thefinelivinggroup.com. J-O-N at thefinelivinggroup.com. That's the best way to reach out to me. And that's easy. And uh, a big thanks, John, for coming on, on the show. Uh, I'm thankful. Our audience is thankful. And uh, I hope you're thankful as well for the experience. <laughs> I'm very thankful for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Bye, John. Have a good one. All right. You too.